Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. On this day in history, in the year 1975, May 28th, the Economic Community of West African States was formed via the Treaty of Lagos. So 15 members of West African States came together to form this community to say we want to create self-sufficiency for our states. They want to create sort of like a, a borderless West Africa where, you know, all the states can come together and um, advance their economic goals and aims. And it was on this day in history that the economic community of West African states was formed. So they say they're going to ensure integration, you know, for economy, industry, transport, telecoms, energy, agriculture, natural resources, and all of this. So there were very high expectations of economic integration as well, you know, saying that this regional group they had a focus to basically, you know, make sure that they're having a borderless region, exploiting their abundant resources amongst each other. So um, we know that um, in January 2007, um, it transformed their ECOWAS secretariat to a commission. And um, they formed a single trade block. And we know that, you know, the economic community of West African states have been clamoring for a single currency that was going to be called ECO. Um, that really hasn't really kicked off yet, but you know, it's in the works and you know, basically on this day in history, um, 15 states of West Africa came together to say, let's uh, form the ECOWAS for all the reasons to integrate economically and otherwise. Yes, 1975, long, long, long ago, you know, and um, you know, every now and then people would always ask what has been the relevance of ECOWAS since then. Um, every now and then, of course, you know, they send in, you know, troops, um, you know, uh, to uh, peacekeeping troops mostly, uh -huh. you know, to certain uh, countries uh, that are at war, you know, to save lives and all of that. Um, you know, the economic value of ECOWAS, you know, um, you know uh, has also been questioned, you know, every now and then, you know, how much business and how much partnership, you know, how much, you know, has, you know, the ECOWAS block itself been able to benefit each member state and all of that, which, of course, you know, are genuine concerns. Um, but, you know, it's still a good thing you know, that it does exist, still a good thing that there is that, um, you know, uh, body that unites all the, you know, West African states, the 15 uh, states. Um, there is that, you know, um, figurehead, basically, that has also, you know, played its role one way or the other. Could do better. Um, you know, same way they also questioned the United Nations and all of that, you know, how relevant have you been? You know, you know how, how yeah. loud is your voice? How powerful is your voice? You know, so how powerful is the voice of ECOWAS also? Um, you know, with these things. Mali currently is, you know, in some sort of crisis. Um, and we hope that there is some peace and we hope that there is some, um, um, in the next couple of days, some of all of that is settled. We can't be having coup every, coups every uh, two weeks True. in Mali. And regarding ECOWAS and the intention to have a borderless region, I personally feel that we could do a lot regarding um, tourism, for instance. You know, so what we're talking about, you know, Nigerians going on vacation, going to Dubai. How many Nigerians have been to Ghana? How many Nigerians have been to neighboring republics, um, neighboring countries, Togo, Bene? How many Nigerians have really ex explored these areas? Or how many of, how many citizens of those countries have come, you know, visited other countries in the West African region? So I feel it would be a great idea if, in addition to all the many things that, you know, the ECOWAS should be, should be clamoring for, to be, you know, the creation of or, you know, advancement of tourism and integration, travel, schooling, exchange programs. They have lots of these abroad. Yeah. Like a Nigerian could spend two semesters here, one semester taking your same course in University of Ghana, taking your same yeah. course in another a university. At the reduced, I think reduced these um, you know, price, you know, um, it shouldn't be you know, as expensive as, as it is. Sometimes, you know, yes, there are countries in Africa yes. that you, you need to go to that it's more expensive than going to the UK or going to, to Dubai. My friends who schooled in Togo no, told no me how expensive, in fact, they charge Nigerian students way, way higher. So these are the things that we should even consider, you know. But I feel that there's a lot of potential for the ECOWAS. Just like the NYC, I don't feel it should be scrapped. I feel there are reviews that should be made. But there's a lot of potential for ECOWAS and I feel it's still relevant today. Yeah. All right, on this day um, in history, in the year 2020, um, a couple of days ago, well, on this day um, in 2020, um, the George Floyd incident happened, and we had spoken about that, I think, some, sometime earlier this week. The protests across uh, the United States were becoming wider and uh, more violent. 
And in Minnesota on this day, there was a state of emergency declared following the protest um, about George Floyd's death. Um, Minnesota Governor Tim Walls declared a state of emergency and activated Minnesota's National Guard to restore order after the protest over the death of George Floyd uh, turned violent the uh, night before. Um, everyone, I believe, knows the story of George Floyd, who um, died after police officers arrested him for um, allegedly um, uh, giving out a fake $20 bill. Um, and um, one of the officers uh, uh, put his knee on his neck for almost nine minutes, which eventually led to his death. Um, it started, you know, another uh, protest in the United States, um, um, you know, to protect black, black lives and to express the fact that black lives do matter. Um, it also started another conversation in the United States on racial segregation and racial injustice that has been going on for many, many, many years. Um, yesterday, I think uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi, I saw her in a video with uh, George Floyd's daughters um, 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 and all of that, you know, but, you know, for, for me, you know, the question really would be how much has changed, you know, what new laws have come into place since his death? Um, what has changed about policing, about racism in the United States, what has, what has changed about you know, the criminal justice system and racial injustice in the United States since his death. Um, it cannot just be photo ops here and there. There has to be a difference. There has to be um, uh, uh, new laws and, and you know, acceptance you know, of all races and, and equality, basically. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we heard about um, new laws by Joe Biden to protect Asian Americans uh, from being assaulted after the COVID-19 yes. um, 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 issue. Um, after but, Trump said it was um, a Chinese flu. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you know what has been done, you know, to protect blacks, you know, also in the United States. So, um, sadly, you know, George Floyd had to die for these conversations um, to spring up. But I feel like there's a lot more that needs to be done uh, to uh, completely raise the level of racism. As, or at least minimize the level of racism that still does exist in the United States and across the world. Um, but on this day, basically, uh, Tim Walls um, declared a state of emergency and called in the National Guard to help, you know, reduce and protect uh, uh, property in Minnesota after the riots were going totally wild. Mm. And that's it on Today in History. We'll take a break here to return to discuss, you know, what the agenda ahead is for the new Chief of Army staff who have been appointed by President Mohamed Buhari. Do stay with us. <laughs>